Hi everyone, welcome to Focal Academy. See this problem. Here one circuit is given here. So having voltage source that is here RMS voltage was given in phasor form. And this voltage was connected across two impedances that is Z1 and Z2. So here where Z1 is given as 60 with phase angle minus 30 degrees ohms and Z2 was given as 40 with phase angle 40 degrees. Now asking that how can you find here apparent power, real power and reactive power for the given circuit? This is the problem. Here observe circuit carefully. So here two impedances that is Z1 and Z2 are in parallel and was connected to a voltage source that is 120 with phase angle 10 degrees. So and it is a RMS voltage. So this RMS voltage was supplied across these two impedances. So whenever impedances are in parallel, the voltage is same. So whatever the voltage was connected across these impedances, that is the voltage. That means across Z1, this is the voltage, across Z2, this is the voltage. So in parallel, current was divided, we know that. So here this is the IT current, this is the total current from the source and whenever the components are in parallel, the current was divided as I1, I2, I3 like this. Here two impedances are there, so there one, therefore I1 and I2. So first of all find current I1 and I2. So we know that impedance values and the voltage across the impedances. So these are the impedances and this is the voltage across the impedances. So according to Ohm's law we know that V equal to IZ. So from this current I equal to V by Z. So across impedance Z, whenever having certain voltage, this is the current. So this is the current across this impedance whenever this much voltage is there, according to Ohm's law. Now here, according to Z1, the voltage is 120 with phase angle 10. Substitute in this equation, we will get 120 with phase angle 10 across Z1 impedance Z1 was given as 60 with phase angle minus 30. It gives the current in Z1 that is I1. Similarly, I2 equal to the voltage across impedance 2 that is 120 with phase angle 10 upon that impedance value that is given as 40 with phase angle 45. Next step. How to simplify these phasor forms? So here numerator and denominator having phasor forms. How to apply division between two phasor forms? So let it small look here. So in the numerator, amplitude A with phase angle theta 1 upon in the denominator, amplitude B with phase angle theta 2. So the division between these, nothing but A by B. So where A and B are real numbers and the difference of the phase angle that is theta 1 minus theta 2. Apply this, it gives division between phasor forms. So when compared with complex numbers division, phasor form division is very easy. Okay. Now here, 61's, 62's. With angle 10 minus of minus 30. It becomes 2 with angle 10 plus 30 that's equal to 2 with phase angle 40. So this is the current, units are amperes. So due to RMS voltage, so it is RMS current. Now similarly here, 41 is 43s. So 3 with phase angle 10 minus 45, that's equal to 3 with phase angle minus 35. So units are current unit is amperes and it is due to RMS voltage, so it is RMS current. Now we got current I1 and I2. Now how can you find total apparent power, total real power and total act power? So before finding these three parameters, so find total complex power. So from that total complex power, we can easily find total apparent power, total real power and total react power. Now how can you find that total complex power? So let's hear total complex power. So 
सो लेट कंसिडर इट इज यस टी टोटल कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर सो हाउ कैन यू फाइंड सो वी नीड टू फाइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर इन इम्पिडेंस जेड वन लेट कंसिडर इट इज एस वन एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर इन जेड टू दैट इज एस टू सो टोटल कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर इक्वल टू सम ऑफ द कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर्स सो ड्यू टू इम्पिडेंस वन सेटिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर वॉज जेनेटेड दैट इज एस वन एंड ड्यू टू इम्पिडेंस टू वी गॉट सेटिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर दैट इज एस टू सो सम ऑफ दिस टू कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर गिव टोटल कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ फाइन एस वन एंड एस टू सो एस वन इक्वल टू सो दिस स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मुला फॉर फाइंडिंग द कॉम्प्लेक्स पावर ड्यू टू इम्पिडेंस वन दैट इज वी आर एम एस स्क्वेर अपॉन जेड वन कॉन्जिकेट सो वेर एस टू इज सेम फॉर्मुला जस्ट इम्पिडेंस इन चेंज सो वी आर एम एस स्क्वेर मी स्क्वेर ऑफ वी आर एम एस अपॉन जेड टू कॉन्जिकेट सो दैट इज नथिंग बट ये वी आर एम एस इज दिस इज सो वन ट्वेंटी विथ फेज एंगल टेन सॉरी नो फेज एंगल ओनली वी आर एम एस मीन्स एम्पिट्यूड सो टेक द वी आर एम एस एम्पिट्यूड दैट इज वन ट्वेंटी सो वन ट्वेंटी होल स्क्वेर अपॉन जेड वन कॉन्जुगेट सो जेड वन इज वी हैव यर सिक्सटी विथ फेज एंगल माइनस थर्टी अप्लाई कॉन्जुगेट मीन्स इन कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स फॉर ए प्लस आई बी कॉन्जुगेट इज ए माइनस आई बी सो लाइक दैट सो वेन अवर कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर इन द फेजर फॉर्म इट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट इज दैट इज ए विथ फेज एंगल थीटा इज देयर इट्स कॉन्जुगेट इज एम्पलीट इज सेम नो चेंज बट angle is because minus so minus theta so it is the complex conjugate for this feather form now apply this here it becomes so z1 conjugate is amplitude is same here phase angle is minus 30 so it becomes minus of means 30 now similarly in h2 so we are is 120 whole square and complex conjugate for z2 so that is Amplitude is same, that is forty, and phase in here forty five is there, becomes minus, that is minus forty five. Now how can we simplify here? Here there is no phase means nothing but zero. Here also zero phase, so it becomes so one twenty into one twenty by sixty with phase angle minus thirty, sixty one, sixty two, nothing but. 240 with phase angle minus 30 degrees. So similarly here, 120 into 120 upon 40 with phase angle 45. So 41 is 43 is nothing but 360 with phase angle 45 degrees. Now we got complex power. At impedance one and impedance two, that is S one and S two. Now we want total complex power, that is S T. So that is S T equal to sum of two complex powers. That is two forty with phase angle minus thirty plus three sixty with phase angle forty five. So observe carefully here. So here we need basic knowledge of complex numbers. here division and multiplications are very easy between feather forms so while addition and subtractions are very easy between complex numbers so here addition is not possible between feather forms so that's why convert that into complex form so this is r angle theta theta 1 And this is R two with angle theta two, so convert this into complex form. So that is R one into cos of theta one plus I sine theta one plus and it becomes R two into cos of theta two plus I sine theta. Now substitute here values. So two forty becomes cos minus thirty. Plus i into sine minus thirty 
so by simplifying this it value is equal to so by using calculator we'll get this value is 207.85 minus i or j so i 120 units are volt amperes so and it becomes no substitute values here also so what is 360 cos of theta to is 45 so cos 45 plus i sin 45 so by using calculator this value will get 254.6 plus i 254.6 volt amperes so this is s1 and this is s2 now add so add the real parts and add the complex parts and it becomes total complex power so that is st is equal to 462.4 plus i 134.6 volt ampere so this is the total complex power so it is very important so from this we can easily find total apparent power and total rear power and total react power from the total complex power now let's see here this is the total complex power we got now we are first of finding the apparent power total apparent power so total apparent power is equal to magnitude of complex power so this root of so we know that for complex number magnitude is root of a square plus b square so this is real part and this is imaginary part so root of 462.4 whole square plus 134.6 whole square by simplifying this we will get one value so that is 481.6 volt ampere so this is the total apparent power next total real power so in the name also is there real means real part the real part is called as real power so real part of from the complex power that gives the real part is 462.4 and it is imaginary part this is real part units are parts third problem is total reactive power so total reactive power nothing but imaginary part so imaginary part of complex power imaginary part is 134.6 so 134.6 units are where so simply it is nothing but so real part is due to resistor and the imaginary part the impedance was due to react components like a capacitor and inductor okay so this is apparent power and this is real real part is nothing but real power and imaginary part is react power so magnitude gives apparent power real part gives real power and imaginary part gives react power and this is the process of simplification and thanks for watching please subscribe like share thanks